Oh my god, hey! You're watching Mickey Joe Theater! Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And this is Oh My God Hey! My weekly vlog series uh, where I take you with me to all of the different shows and events that I get to in my week as an independent theatre critic and content creator. And I am so pleased that Oh My God Hey! is back after a little bit of a festive break. I am back with more weekly vlog content. So I'll be taking you to all of the shows that I get to go and see, which is super fun because most of my videos are just me sat here talking to you about shows and whether I liked them or not. Uh, but with the Oh My God Hey! videos, I get to actually take you into the theatre, show you things like merch and the curtain calls, and just the adventures that my stagey boyfriend Aaron and James and I get up to in our weeks. Hopefully these will be a regular fixture on a Sunday for a little while, so make sure you subscribe so you do not miss any more of Oh My God Hey. Also, at the beginning of this video, you heard Telly Leung, who is currently starring in Allegiance, the UK transfer of the Broadway musical inspired by George Takei. It's currently playing at the Charing Cross Theatre. You get to see a decent preview of it in this week's weekly vlog, so I hope you will consider buying tickets. I've already posted my review, and I thought it was really special, so make sure you get tickets to go and see Allegiance at the Charing Cross Theatre. Now enjoy this week's Oh My God Hey! Oh my god, hey! Hello. We are here at Charing Cross today yes. uh, because we're on our way to the Charing Cross Theatre to go to like the press photo call for Allegiance. Uh, now we went to see this in rehearsal a few weeks ago. It is now in previews. We are going to see it very shortly um, on the gala night performance. But today we're going to a photo call. So I thought I might show you what a press photo call might look like. I'm expecting some other like stagey outlets to be there, like What's On Stage will probably be there, um, and maybe some TV this people as well. And trains are departing, so we're going to head over to the Charing Cross Theatre. Come, come with us. So as you are looking at the trains leaving Charing Cross Station, this is a tip if you're arriving from Charing Cross, if you go to the left of all the platforms, there's a little door out of there and it takes you into that little concourse area. Take the escalators down and that's going to put you into Villiers Street, which is where the Charing Cross Theatre is. And I feel like not enough people know where this theatre is or know how easy it is to get to, because um, it's like hidden away on embankment. But we are going down the escalators um, it's also opposite heaven, so if that is known to you, as I suspect it may be, then you will know where the Charing Cross Theatre is as well. But I've arrived down here on Villiers Street, and the Charing Cross Theatre is down this tunnel over there behind me. So we're going to go to the photo call for Allegiance. Good Japanese lesson. Takai is a Japanese word that translates into English as expensive. I will give you a bill of <laughs> I am Takei. Oh, Takei, all right. Very Rhymes with OK. But you are expensive as well, so I'm expensive. Well, I tell people Takei doesn't mean cheap. Your partner's a little stiff. Oh, yeah. He's kind of a drip. <laughs> We are loyal Americans putting our lives on the line. We condemn these draft dodgers. Set an example. Help others to see beyond race. Help finally find a way to make me proud. Think of a day. Aha! Uh -huh. So, we have been spending our afternoon at the National Theatre, which is somewhere somewhere over there. It's, it's the pink and purple you can see on the South Bank behind us, because uh, they have a lovely foyer space for working, um, and we had some nice lunch, including a Hex-themed cupcake. Now, you know we're Disney people. I'm all about themed sweet snacks. 
and like show themed confectionery. Normally you get like a themed cocktail. I've not seen themed cakes before at the National Theatre. That's exciting to me and I hope that's something we see continuing. Um, but we've had a nice day. It was raining buckets yes. after the Allegiance photo call so I didn't update you uh, while we were swimming our way to the National Theatre but that was fun. There wasn't um, an enormous amount of content for us to grab because it was more geared towards uh, photographers, the photographers yeah. and the TV stuff but it was really cool just to see that side of things. I feel like I've done some photo call-esque events before but um, not necessarily anything that um, TV intense and cool and prob probably not in London so that was fun um, and George Takei is amazing and inspirational he's and so he's so lovely and he's so funny and listening to him talk and like the passion with which he talks about the show and he's so funny and he's so charming and so lively and boy he's just he's wonderful and Telly Leung um, being in London right now still blows our minds because we're both huge fans of yeah. Telly Leung. Um, so very fun to be there and looking forward to seeing Allegiance. But right now we are on our way to see what? The Palladium Panto. I was going to say Sean, but with oh. Sean <laughs> we are going to go and see the Palladium Panto. So it's very much after Christmas, um, but Panto still lingers on yes. like a seasonal cold. So we are on our way to the London Palladium to go and see Jack and the Beanstalk? Yes? Yes, yes it's Jack and the Beanstalk. It hardly matters, it's the Palladium Panto and that's all anyone's calling it. But officially it's Jack and the Beanstalk. So we're going to go and see that and um, we will check back in with you when we're on our way. Okay, we have reached the blinding marquees of the London Palladium. We have arrived with Aaron and Sean. Sean is here. Look at Sean's great haircut. You do, you take that. Getting that content for socials, you get that content. Look at the starry cast of Jack and the Beanstalk at the London Palladium. So the London Palladium Panto has become a fixture over the last few years. And a lot of these are familiar faces, people like Nigel Havers, Paul Zerdian, Gary Wilmot and Julian Clary. They are joined this year by Louis Gaunt and Natalie McQueen of Mary Poppins and of Bonnie and Clyde this year. Rob Madge, giving you some cow. Rob Madge Hello. of My Son's a Queer, but what can you do? And of course, comedy television legend Dawn French. Very excited for this one. We're going to go inside and we're going to go and see the show. Panto in January, why not? Yeah. Okay, we have entered by the servant's entrance of the London Palladium. Yeah. Previous show posters on the wall. We're on our way to the Grand Circle this evening. Fun for us. We're in the Grand Circle bar. Some London Palladium stars of years past. Danielle Hope and Michael Crawford from The Wizard of Oz. And Sophie Evans from the same production. You saw Sophie, didn't you? Yeah, she was really good. Yeah, there you go. I saw, I saw those two. <laughs> We have arrived in the Grand Circle. The boys have souvenir brochures. Tell us how much you paid for the souvenir brochures. Too much. <laughs> 12 pounds. 12 pounds, presented without comment. It is a very thick souvenir brochure. You can tell that from the side. And this is our view. These are, these are good view. Good view from the Grand Circle. That is the stage. It is already looking bright and sparkly and expensive. We have some wistful background music with the occasional barnyard animal noise. Um, I'm not sat up here in the Palladium for years. I was sat up here for a chorus line back in, I think, 2013. It is quite steep for any vertigo sufferers. Uh, coming down those steps may not be your jam. Um, but in terms of view, I'm not, I'm not mad about this so far. I will check back in with you at the interval. Okay, so we're in the interval and the savvy amongst you may have noticed a slight change in the theatre. It's not the safety curtain. There is a beanstalk that has been um, erected to well, borrow Julian Clary's language um, that goes from the stalls of the legendary London Palladium up past both circles um, and up to the roof of the auditorium. This is amazing. This is the most spectacular and expensive thing I think I have ever seen in a pantomime. And I knew this happened. I'd seen pictures of this. I did not know that Louis Gaunter's Jack actually climbed up the thing and scaled it out of the ceiling of the auditorium. That to me is amazing. Like, to have a giant beanstalk in Jack and the Beanstalk and have him climb it up to the sky. That's something else. That's very cool. Look at this. Look at the leaf detail. Look at the look at that foliage. Excellent work. Ah, ah, wind. Wind. It's suddenly very blustery 
on Carnaby Street. Um, we have just enjoyed, I was going to say our last panto of the year. No, our first panto of the year. It's 2023. Was that weird seeing panto in January? A little bit. I didn't think it was too bad. I didn't even think of that until you said it. <laughs> no, because it wasn't inherently Christmassy. Where's Sean? I can't find him. It was inherently very Christmassy. I do wonder if there's anything that we've just seen that might not have been, might have been in it that wasn't in it before Christmas. Oh, you think they do like post? I just wonder if post New Year they take something, they take anything that's too Christmassy out. Yeah, I don't know if like a Jack and the Beanstalk is particularly no, I don't think Christmassy that. to begin with. And do panto's need to be Christmassy? To be fair? We're asking the difficult questions here because the McKellen Mother Goose is, you know, that's touring till till Easter, yeah. so and beyond, I believe. So wasn't that, wasn't that what traditionally happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. Panto was never originally. Christ I mean, it was like Jesus. It's like Jesus's <laughs> birthday. It wasn't at Christmas, but <laughs> the Pope preferred it that way. That's that's true. You can Google that. So <laughs> that's how it is now. Um, but. We enjoyed, we had a fabulous time. I had so much fun. To be it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, very my smutty. first Palladium Panto, very smutty, very smutty. Again, I would argue much more for the kids. No, other way around. Much, oh. more, for the, much more for the adults than for the kids, but fun, lots of fun. Um, so now we are going to um, go back and get ready for tomorrow's exciting adventure, <laughs> which is a whole, that's a whole different story. But for now, uh, we had a very lovely time. Oh my god, hey! Hello! We are back in Charing Cross Station where you saw us not but a few minutes ago. For mm. us it's been days because <laughs> when last I spoke to you, we were getting ready to go back and pack for a trip. Not now, not at this time. Um, and we went to Paris. <laughs> We've been in Paris uh, since we last spoke, but we are back in the UK. And Disneyland Paris. And Disneyland Paris, yeah, we've had a crazy weekend, but we are we are back in the UK, we are back in London almost immediately. As lovely as it would have been to have a night in without the theatre, it's gala night for Allegiance. Now, for a few weeks now, I've been showing you bits and pieces from Allegiance because we've been invited to various different events. We're invited to see a rehearsal press event and then the photo call, uh, which has all been very exciting. Uh, so very intrigued to now finally see the show. Uh, we have a little bit more insight into it than maybe we would for other productions that we don't know anything about because uh, we've seen some of these events. I'm very dark. Let's turn and face this way. There we go. Um, but yeah, you'll have thoughts on this. What's, what's, what's the vibe of getting to see a show that you've like seen at events and things? Because you've done that in the past. Yeah, so sometimes when I work on a show, it's interesting going through the rehearsal. You see it in rehearsals, then you see it in tech and in dress. And I don't, I don't think it really changes it. It's sometimes you understand the process that it took to get there. Yeah, so you've never seen anything that's like feels completely different to what you're expecting based on the previews you've seen? No, I think it just gives more context. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything that from rehearsals or not even stuff that you've worked on, but like because you've been invited to like press events yeah. and things before in the past? Have you ever seen anything where you were watching something and you thought, oh, I'm really not going to like this, and then you were surprised uh, how good it was when you actually did? <laughs> yes, for well, funny, kind of. So Madagascar, we got sent to the, we went to the rehearsal of Madagascar, <laughs> and I was a bit like, hmm, Madagascar the musical, interesting, and then. Watching it in full, it just had a lot of whimsy to it, so it was actually a lot more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. There you go, there you go. Well, we're going to go and get some food. I want to go to Itsu, which is right here next to the Charing Cross Theatre, and then we're going to head down for gala night of Allegiance. And I'm going to try and not fall down these stairs. <laughs> ah. Okie dokie, and down to the Charing Cross Theatre. We've just stopped, oh, sorry, I <laughs> changed course. We've just stopped for dinner in Itsu, uh, which is a lovely little pre-theatre dining option around Charing Cross. Um, we had some triple chicken teriyaki rice bowls. So much chicken, much teriyaki, also some rice, uh, which was very nice. Now we're heading over to Allegiance at the Charing Cross. I am once again showing you how close the Charing Cross Theatre is to the Strand, because all of these theatres on the Strand, the Adelphi and the Savoy and the Vaudeville, all get great footfall and people know where they are and I feel like not enough people know where the Charing Cross Theatre is. So with the Strand and the Charing Cross Station behind me, if I turn around, 
You see these lights going down. I'm going to go down this side street here. You okay? There's a donut time. There's a donut time here now? Stop everything. There's a new donut time on this road. Oh my gosh. This changes everything. Walking over here. Wow. 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 Okay. Look at this, there is a new donut time. We love a donut time. If you've been watching these vlogs before, you will know how much we love donut time. Literally, this is exactly where they have needed a donut time. Look at the notorious P.I.G. I might have to get a donut time right now. I mean, it's freezing outside, but I don't care. Okay, we didn't get donut time. We're coming back after the show, and if it's still open, and if they still have gluten-free ones, it's a sign. Because we will be back here. Oh, yeah. we're, we're near this area all the time. It's a very squeaky escalator. Um, yes, on our way to Gala Night at the Charing Cross Theatre of Allegiance. Let's go inside and let's go and check out this show. If it is Dennis Waterman, then that's another one off of my new tricks. Oh, no, no, sorry. Pete Oh, okay. Is Dennis Waterman still alive? I don't know, but I've sat next, what I was going to say is I've sat next to many of the cast of New Tricks at different shows and I would love to fill that bingo card with the ones who are still with us. Anyway, there are photographers outside and we're trying to work out who is arriving because it could be like a Star Trek connection. It could be, it could be, it could be various different people. We shall find out. We shall. I want to take pictures outside the theatre, but I don't want to get in anyone's way. Let's do it now. Now is a good time. We're going to do it now. Oh my god, hey. Hello. We have just left the press night for Allegiance, not the press night, the gala night for Allegiance, because uh, we were invited by the producers, thank you very much, yes. rather than um, the press team. Um, and yeah, we had. I shan't. I shan't hold the moving handrail. Um, we had a lovely night. Yeah. My review will be coming to YouTube very soon, if it hasn't already. It probably already has. And our first impressions video um, uh, will also be on the members section of my YouTube. Make sure you check that out if you want to hear both of our opinions on the show and our candid, immediate, unedited opinions of the show. Um, but really fun, really fun gala night. It's always fun going to one of those things because you see, rather than just like the usual, not that I don't love seeing the usual press types, but like, saw some really fun people, like uh, Pippa Cleary was there, Bake Off composer. Um, got to see Danny, Danny with the camera, various people got to chat with, uh, loads of people, George Takei was of course delighting all of the crowd who were taking pictures with him and getting him to sign things and just a really fun celebratory night even yeah. though um, I'm part of the circle that is there to review stuff it's nice to be there um, on the night that's just about like celebrating the show's success and existence so that was fun, that was, that was a good time and now we are going to go back home and maybe I'll go and film my review for this show. Oh my god, hey! Hello. We are in London again. I am here with Erin. I'm Hello. here with Ellie. Talks theatre. I do. She does. Frequently. All the time. <laughs> it's getting her to stop that's the problem, actually. I'm joking. We love you. And uh, we're meeting up with Daz and Sean and 
presumably some other stage people, because we are going to Gala Night of Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge, the Red Windmill. And we saw the real one. We this did. Weekend. Just drop that in. That's going to be me all evening. I'm like, well, having, <laughs> having visited the actual Moulin Rouge some 72 hours ago. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going for our third visit, my third visit <laughs> to Moulin Rouge, um, with uh, first time with a new cast, so that's exciting. And um, we love a gala. Last night was at the gala for Allegiance, tonight is the gala for Moulin Rouge. Fancy! An excuse to dress up. Um, I will show you my outfit momentarily when we're outside the theatre. We're currently walking down Shaftesbury Avenue. I'm in a terrifying stretch at the moment because Darren Brown, um, incredibly talented, brilliant man, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like nobody's business, like I find him genuinely very unnerving. And then after that, 222, a ghost story, which also scary, but Cheryl is less threatening. So a particularly, a particularly chilling section of Shaftesbury Avenue at present. Um, what I find very exciting about this evening is, Ellie, you do not know Moulin Rouge I at all. know nothing about it. Never seen the film, never seen the musical. Uh, the most I know is the song Lady Marmalade. That's I, it. I could have told you that this plot is about anything. I could like, yeah. there's, there's a happy is cartoon giraffe. Two red windmills coming together yes. in love, peace and harmony. Yes. <laughs> yes. The ensemble all plays spokes, is what it is. <laughs> You could have said it was an X-rated show. It's all about the windmill. Yeah. <laughs> if you get in a certain seat in this theatre, you don't see a windmill the entire time. Oh yeah, that's true. That's uh, very true. No. Or an elephant. Or an elephant. No. No. Um, but we are rounding the corner now, approaching... Oh my gosh, I never noticed this. Look at the street this is on. Great. Oh my god. Because it's, yeah, by, it's, by, it's, by, it's by the windmill, windmill theatre. <laughs> yeah. We're on Great Windmill Street. Didn't the windmill become more theatre even than it used to be? I remember they had to change their license. They did. Well, I've seen Mrs. Henderson Presents, um, and I don't remember the intricacies of the plot beyond um, being slightly taken aback by um, the intricacies of the female form unexpectedly. I think. No, I knew they were going to be naked. I just wasn't expecting to be sitting so close. That was. <laughs> That was on me. Anyway, this, this, this video has, wow, has just deviated slightly. I think we might be in the right place. Here are the flashing lights of the Piccadilly Theatre. Still the best marquee in the West End. Don't at me, it's true. Here it is, the beautiful facade of the Piccadilly Theatre with Moulin Rouge, lovely red signage. Hello, this is my Moulin Rouge outfit. I'm wearing two different shirts, I'm layering. They are both from ASOS. The trousers and the shoes are Zara. Um, and I have thermal long johns and a t-shirt, uh, sponsored by the fact it's freaking freezing. It's really, really cold. This is Moulin Rouge. Aesthetic, aesthetic. Why are you running away from me? <laughs> As a reminder, here's all the merchandise that you can get at Moulin Rouge. We have mugs, we have water bottles, we have shot glasses. We have this cute little pendant. Look at that. I quite like that. I know it's a Christmas decoration sort of ornament situation, but I want it nonetheless. The badges. Of course you have the enamel badges. Aaron loves, he loves a pin badge. We have this beautiful book. We have this cute little diary situation. We have totes, we have posters, we have t-shirts. Look at all of these things and then some more here over the other side. We have another design of t-shirt and tote bag. We have some caps. We have a display of the pin badges there. And then we have some more things here. Look at this. It's all just so aesthetic. You gotta love them. Ooh, that's exciting. Nathaniel Morrison is on for Le Truc. We've been given samples of this lovely little CBD beverage. Is your... uh, which I don't know enough about science to know what that means, but it's peach and ginger and it tastes nice. Yeah. Ellie with a Y, Ellie with an IE. Yeah. Aaron, how many stars for this beverage? Um, Where are you guys three. It's a three star uh, beverage. Three. I think it's a four star beverage. Yeah. I don't know enough about what it is. No, I have oh, concerns. <laughs> but, but, I mean, it's CBD. CBD is fine. CBD. Yeah, but that's what I put on my, like my cleanser has CBD. Sometimes, sometimes my cleanser goes in my I don't always aim well. So this is the view from our seat and we are pretty happy. We are pretty happy. You can see the elephant situation up there. 
so much detail in this set design. There is the Moulin Rouge. We are in E, 12 and 13. Very excited to see the show. Oh my god, hey! Hello! Guess where we are? We are back in Bath. So I feel like the last time we came to Bath was a really early Oh my god, hey episode. It might even have been the first or second week. Uh, yeah, but we are, we're back in Bath today um, and we're here to see another production, uh, but not in the main auditorium of the Theatre Royal Bath. We're here to see a show in the studio. And fun fact, the first time I ever came to Bath was to come see a play at the Theatre Royal Bath and it was to see a production of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. This must have been in 2013, 2014, years ago. I arrived to find that the matinee had been cancelled, so I just had a nice day in Bath. I never actually saw the show. Uh, but today, that is the play I have come back to see. So it is a full circle moment, returning to Bath, to finally try and see this play. So we're on our way now to check into our hotel, but also just to soak up the lovely and aesthetic and stunning vibes, stunning vibes in Bath. Can't fault the vibes. Look at this telephone box that's not at all functional because it's flowers. Why not? Absolutely why not? Um, it's just a tourist spot. And um, for those who are big TV fans, this is where Bridgerton was filmed. It is. It is where Bridgerton was filmed. Um, so we're going to go check into the hotel. Um, we've been frantically doing work on the train journey here. I've been editing a video that you will have already seen by now. So we're going to check into the hotel, finish a little bit of that off get that exporting and uploading and then we're gonna go and get an early lunch because it's a six o'clock curtain. I'm saying that to you so that I remember. Six o'clock show, three and a half hours long um, and you know why that is? That is so that they can entice London critics to come down and still be able to get a train back to London because there's something like a 10.13 train from Bath to London so six o'clock curtain for a three and a half hour show which is madness and means early big lunch, no late big lunch early dinner, eating in the afternoon, basically. So, hotel first, then we're gonna go find somewhere to eat. So, immediately upon arrival to Bath, our first stop has to be not the cathedral, but next to the cathedral, Mrs. Potts's Chocolate House. We came here last time. I think both days we were in Bath we came here last time. Yeah. Um, because they do lots of amazing, very tasty things, but also they do chocolate cookie sandwiches which are delicious and one of them's gluten free so Aaron can have the double chocolate one um, and he has and I have a chocolate chip one and we are very much looking forward to them so immediate chocolate indulgence um, when we get to Bath love that for us hello um, so we have eaten our cookie sandwiches and then we, we went in to get a little free sample of fudge and maybe buy a slab of fudge and we have left with three slabs of fudge from the fudge kitchen but if you are in Bath go and get some of the fudge from the fudge kitchen because they let you try a little bit of whichever one you're interested in um, and they're just very friendly and they make lovely fudge. You can freeze it and have it cold, you can microwave it and eat it warm. It's delicious. It's so so good. Um, and we are outside the Theatre Royal Bath which, what did I try and call it last time? Did I keep saying Brighton last time? Maybe, yeah. I was very yeah, frazzled. It was a busy summer but we've arrived at the Theatre Royal Bath and we need to work out where we're going later because as I said we're not seeing the show in the Theatre Royal Bath even though it has some quite starry names in this production of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf Elizabeth McGovern from Downton Abbey Do Grace Scott from I believe Mission Impossible but I know him from being Ian in Desperate Housewives as, as should you and uh, our hotel is really nearby which is very helpful it is just over here on the other side of the square we are staying in Z Hotel Z Hotels and I paid five pounds more to get a window Luxury, I know, we know how to live. Um, so, gonna go and try and work out. We think it's down this side street here. Yeah, I can see entrance. Eagle Eyes Aaron James has spotted where we are going. That's the stage door. That's the stage door. And that's the egg. That's the egg. Main house, Euston North Studio, the egg. Maybe the Euston North Studio is also accessible via right, the front the entrance, because this is the egg, which is something else entirely which is also a performance space um, as opposed to a protein heavy breakfast food but it's like yeah this is where the young people shows are we're gonna regroup and then we're gonna let you know when we have found the Euston off studio this is why I get places early because 
I can't be trusted. I could Google this and just find out, but it's more fun to explore. Okay, so I cheated and I googled and I'm now going to share what I have learned with you. So as you're looking at the facade of the Theatre Royal Bath, if you go down this little side street immediately to its left, uh, you will pass along the building, you will pass the stage door on the right. Hello Ian from Desperate Housewife. No, he's not there. Okay. You will then pass the egg and then we're hoping as we round this road onto the right, I'm sure we saw the Euston North Studio last time and we've just forgotten this entirely. We're hoping as we come here, yes, here it is. This is the Ustinov studio it's space. Like a dog style it's a very different entrance, isn't it? The Theatre Royal Bath is very classic and this is very, I mean, you can see it for yourselves. There it is, that's the door. That's the entrance way to the Ustinov studio. Let me show you. So here it is, Ustinov. Nice little sliding door that will reveal the entrance, presumably, and this is what we are seeing this evening. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by Edward Olby, one of my favourite plays of all time, if not my favourite play of all time. And we have some lovely architecture here on the front, actually. Very striking, but it is a completely different aesthetic to the main house on the other side. Oh, hey, oh, hey, let me give you a room tour. So we've just checked into our hotel and it's, we're on the third floor, it's kind of like a Premier Inn hub size of a room. I will show you from the doorway. This is our space. This is what it looks like. There's an Aaron over here. And we have a private bathroom and shower facilities. But it's really cute, actually. The bed is kind of tucked away into this side, uh, which may not be your vibe, but I personally like very much. It makes me feel cosy. I just like the lighting over there. We've got a nice big window. We've got this cute little desk area. I'm finishing up editing and exporting a video right now. Um, got places to hang stuff. Got this little stool I can sit on at the desk. It's cute and it's cosy and it's kind of perfect and kind of everything we need. So this may become our new regular hotel spot when we come to Bath because it is literally just across the courtyard from all of the theatres. So yay for Zed Hotels, or the Hotel, as I have taken to calling it. Haha, <laughs> haha, -ha. bath by evening. So we have been for dinner in the Cozy Club, uh, which was very nice. You had yeah. you had some kind of a risotto situation. Yeah, it was like a chestnut and... Mushroom. Well, it was chestnut mushrooms oh, and yeah. something risotto with chicken. There you go. I had a, a dirty chicken burger because it had a mac and cheese fritter. Um, and then we popped back to our hotel room um, and ran into the PR representatives for this evening who are staying in the same hotel as us. And now we are almost immediately having left the hotel uh, where we need to be. Very nearby, very helpful hotel location. And we are back at the Ustinov studio, this time by the low light of evening. I'll show you what it looks like now, all lit up. So that sliding door is now open to allow us to go in, which helps. There it is, lit up. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I will say, these little poster boards, it looks better on my camera than it does in real life. This is not, this is not lit whatsoever, but the beckoning of the studio is intriguing. Kind of seems like a club. It seems like an underground club rather than a theater. Fascinated by this as a concept. Very bright here good this morning. morning. Good morning and goodbye Bath. Yes. We are heading off. We saw the play last night. It was emotionally the next intense. The train to arrive at platform two will be the 10.35 Great Western Railway service to Portsmouth Harbour. That's our this train. Is the service we're not going to Cardiff Portsmouth Central. though. You'll find out where we're going. We're heading off to um, uh, another theatre today. We are traveling across the south which is very exciting. Um, uh, I need to finish my write-up of last night's performance on the train and then start editing another video. And then hopefully by that time, we will have landed in our next destination. Yay. What is my hair doing? What kind of early 2000s emo situation is going on here? You know what this is? This is hotel hair and body wash and me not bringing my own conditioner. But we are in Southampton today. We have taken the train from Bath to Southampton, which was about an hour and a half. Yeah, something like that. Um, uh, and we have arrived at 
the Southampton Mayflower, theatre of my childhood. This was um, the big touring theatre nearest to me as I was growing up. I used to have a Saturday job and I would work till one o'clock and I would run to a train uh, to make it to a matinee at the Mayflower every weekend to see whatever was here and get a nice little half price ticket um, for young people. I don't know if they still do that, um, but in any case we are here today uh, and we have been invited to see the matinee of My Fair Lady on tour. Now we saw this in town yeah. um, and we've heard exciting things about the tour, so very interested to see it on tour and see if opinions change. To see if I have the same few criticisms that I did about the production, see if I enjoy it more on tour, uh, because sometimes that is the case. Yeah. So that's what we're here to do today. Come with us, I will show you the inside of the Southampton Mayflower. Cheeky little lioness mask from The Lion King, um, presented to the Mayflower Theatre to celebrate 71 performances. At the time, that was a very big deal. Now, The Lion King is doing this sit-down run in Manchester for like years, years at a time. Not actually, but it's there for a good few months. But at the time, this was a very big deal. Seen by over 130,000 people in Southampton. Lion King. Look at this. Costuming from the show. Showing off the elegance. And some more pieces on display here. Look at these boots, these gloves, that hat. And then over here we have some more hats as part of the merch booth. So we can see some of the merch that's on offer here. We can see tote bags. I have that tote bag. It's a very helpful tote bag, let me just say. We have some little pens and key rings and badges and pins. And I think that's a little compact mirror. We have some t-shirt designs, lovely. Nice little white t-shirt design there. Nice little grey hoodie and the dance, dance, dance all night. And then some more things there. We have fans, we have the cast recording. Lovely little merchandise on sale here at My Fair Lady. This production is very floral and aesthetic. Look at these hats. I do just love this foyer. You have a random Aaron James reading the programme he has just purchased. Happy with his purchase, although £10, I will say. But just some lovely... Some lovely design. Oh, another costume! I didn't see this costume over here. Look at this one. That is very nice. Very nice. I believe, certainly Tony Award nominated costumes. I don't know if Catherine Zuber, I believe it was, won the Tony Award for these costumes, but certainly they were nominated. Do you know what else I like is theming. Theming on the snack kiosk. Here, you cannot buy Maltesers without noticing that this is a five-star production. They are desperate for you to see that. Classy. I like it. I like it. Helps complete the theatrical experience. This is something I quite like. When a theatre tells you about its history, these are really cool. I always love reading these. Ten points if you can tell me who this is, starring in Peter Pan in 1987. The performance has just finished, but I wanted to show you the auditorium of the Southampton Mayflower. Look! If you look up here, there it is. Let me show you some more of the theatre. There we have a lovely, lovely safety curtain. And then um, some particularly poorly, poor visibility boxes. Uh, but circle and a balcony up there. It is huge! This is very much what I expected all theatres to look like growing up. Just red and regal and enormous. I used to be fascinated by this, this little skylight fixture in the top here. But a lovely auditorium, I think. Very nice, the Southampton Mayflower. And hopefully I'll be back again very soon. Thank you so much for watching this week's Oh My God Hey, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel for plenty more content coming very soon, including the next episode of this coming out next Sunday. If you want to read my review of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, you can do that on Broadway World, my video reviews of Moulin Rouge, and of Allegiance should already be here live on my channel. Uh, but if you want to keep up to date with all of the written reviews that I do, as well as my videos, you can go to Show Score, click on the link in the description for that as well. And if you want to see the first impressions reviews I do of all of the shows that I see, then you can sign up to become one of my YouTube members. There's a link for that in the description as well. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, 
I'm Minky Joe Theater. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>